What's up everybody, Jack here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to solo Dire Maul tribute runs as a hunter on Classic WoW. First, let's talk about the loot. This is going to be what you hope for. This book, every time this drops, you get anywhere from 600 to 1200 gold. That alone is your epic mount, and that is one of the many reasons that this Run is so enticing once you hit level 60. Not only could you potentially get one item that gives you your epic mount, but you can also get a slew of other items that are super useful for hunters. Look at all of these items. And while it isn't realistic for you to think that you're going to get that book to drop and get your epic mount, it is realistic for you to expect every one of these blue items to drop so much that you're vendoring them. You will be able to get two tarnished elven rings, a barbarous blade, and all this other gear as long as you're able to complete it. That's what we're about to get into. So the most important thing in this entire run is that you really understand how feign death works because most of your frustrations are going to come from when your feign death is resisted so look at these two really basic primitive boring baby drawings that i did you can see that in the first one on the left you're there's a green dot surrounded by five red dots in this example you are the green dot the five red dots are five enemies that are in combat with you if you use feign death when five enemies can see you, there's a higher chance that your feign death is going to be resisted because you're in line of sight of multiple enemies, okay? Whereas, look at the other scenario where there are five enemies, they're coming towards you, you're in combat with them, but there is an object that blocks their line of sight with you. In this case, feign death is almost always going to be successful. Understanding this concept is critical to this run. Only use feign death when you are sure that you are out of line of sight of the enemies. Now, there's a couple different talents that you can use. And honestly, you have a lot of flexibility here. If you look on the right, you can see the build that I use. However, this isn't the only build that you can use. And keep in mind, I use this build because I also occasionally PvP. And I like to do Molten Core once a week with my guild. So I wanted a build that allows me to PvP sometimes, it allows me to do Molten Core, and it specializes in doing these runs, okay? So that's why I've made these choices. Again, you have flexibility. One of the best things about this run is that there are so many different ways to do everything. Don't take everything I'm about to show you as the best way to do it. Just take it as a way to do it. You have the freedom to try so many different things out. That being said, there are three talents I strongly, strongly encourage you to get. And that is Improved Revive Pet, this is going to significantly reduce the casting time of your revive pet, which is going to allow you to cast it while you're being attacked and successfully get your pet back into combat after it dies. This is going to allow you to survive wipes because you'll get enough time to pop another feign death. I also recommend that you get improved aspect of the cheetah because this increases your movement speed and you have cheetah on for most of this run. So it means that you can get away from mobs faster and you do the run more quickly. In addition to that, I highly encourage you to get scattershot because this will allow you to pass by mobs with great ease and to interrupt casters when they are performing a polymorph spell or something else that would get in the way. In addition to that, there are five talents I consider useful, but not incredibly useful, like these first three. And those five talents are Aim Shot, Concussive Shot, Increased Range Distance, Deterrence, and Improved Feign Death. I personally don't think Improved Feign Death is worth it, because the reality is that you're still going to get resists, and you need to anticipate every time that an enemy is going to resist your feign death and have a backup strategy. Summon your pet, get it killed, revive it, get another feign death off. Scattershot, jump on a ledge, get another feign death. There's almost always a way that you can get another chance to apply feign death. And that's what separates somebody who's really good at this than someone who's just average. Their ability to keep going when their feign deaths are resisted. Now, there's a couple items that you're going to need for every single run, and that's food, water, 
healing potions, one large Euphorium charge, and one invisibility potion. You can also use lesser invisibility potions. It's really up to your preference. Okay, these are the minimum required stuff. You're also going to need ammunition and about 10 gold so that you can repair. You can re actually repair in the instance. Now, in addition to these items, there are some very helpful items. You should have both lesser invisibility potions and regular invisibility potions. And the reason for this is that each potion has a 10 minute cooldown. But that only applies to that individual potion. So you can use a lesser invisibility potion and then two minutes later use a regular invisibility potion. This is going to give you more survivability and it's going to be very useful. So I encourage you to carry both lesser invisibility potions and regular invisibility potions for this reason. It's also going to be useful to have a gnomish cloaking device because this item will allow you to get an additional invisibility potion off and it's particularly useful in the boss fight because it's essentially another feigned death. It won't cause you to lose aggro, but it will cause your pet to be the higher aggro. So essentially the boss will turn around when you use that device. It essentially buys you another attempt if you screw up. I also recommend that you have some dense dynamite. This is going to make it easier to kill the bugs whenever you bring other people in, but it's not completely necessary. In addition to that, there's the crescent key or powerful Sephorium charges. You're going to need to be able to get into the instance. And to be honest, I don't have either of these. I just wait at the door. And usually the longest I wait is three or four minutes before someone opens it. Once you're in the instance, you don't need either of these two things unless you're going into the library. But if you do have them, they are useful. Now, let's get into the actual mechanics. We're going to start with Freeze Trap because it is the most basic. Whenever there's one enemy that you need to take care of or pass, you're going to use Freeze Trap or Scatter. And this is all you do. You just freeze him by placing a trap, enticing him, attacking him, bringing him into the trap, and then passing by. Keep in mind that there's always a chance your traps can be resisted. So don't expect that they're foolproof. Scatter shot, as long as you're hit capped, is foolproof. It will always work. Whereas freezing trap has a chance to be resisted. The next thing you want to learn is one wall jump. There's only one location where you need to be, do a wall jump. So if you don't like these, don't worry too much. It is possible to pass this, but it's very useful because after you perform this wall jump, you are in a position where you are not accessible by enemies. So this allows you to feign death effectively. Another ability you're going to be using is scatter shot. And you use it the exact same way as you use freeze trap. You're going to use it to get past one enemy. You can see again, what we're doing is we're running up to the enemy. As soon as they aggro, then we're scattering. And now I'm jumping on this ledge because I can't be accessed and I can feign death essentially. You're also gonna be needing to kill Eyes of Killrog. That's an Eye of Killrog. When it sees you, it summons these two nether walkers and they will wreck you up. Do not let it summon these two nether walkers. Always kill them immediately. Assume it takes two hits to kill them. Sometimes you kill them in one. That was the first one. Here's the location of the second one. The second one can be a little bit tricky because the second eye shares the spawn path with that guard, but you'll see that in the full run. Now, you're also going to be using multiple of these strategies at the same time. For example, in this case, I place a freeze trap, he gets frozen, and then I use a scatter shot, and then I pass. So I'm gonna show you this a couple times just so you can get comfortable with it. We're placing a freeze trap, and then as soon as he freezes, we're scattering, and then we're running past. This is something you're gonna do uh, multiple times depending on how many enemies you need to distract. The next thing we're gonna talk about is invisibility potions. You're gonna use one invisibility potion per successful run, all right? And it's always good to use them with Cheetah enabled. This is going to enable you to get further. And that's essentially all you do. You make sure you're already feigned or already shadow melded, use it, and then it essentially makes you immune to being in combat. The next thing is passive pet pulling. This is the basic pet pull. It's a five step process that enables you to distract mobs and run past while your pet grabs them. Essentially the way it works is you put your pet on stay, you have an attack and you click pet passive and it returns to where it came from. So watch as I do this first pull. Pet's on stay, pet's attacking, pet returns, the position and I run by. You're going to do that multiple times throughout this entire instance. So let's show you again. You summon your pet, you put it on a certain home spot, 
make sure it's healed up. It attacks, and then as soon as it gets one attack, then you click passive, it returns home, and you run by. Now, it's really important that you make sure that you avoid the window of time where your pet has aggroed the mobs, but not all of them. If you pay close attention, you'll notice that one mob responds first and then the group. Make sure that you wait for the group to respond before you respond. And always wait for the demons. All of these demon pets, they have a chance of aggroing through your feign death if you get out of feign death too early. So make sure that you wait for the demon to return back to its original spot. The other kind of pulling is two target pet pulling. And this is essentially the same thing, except instead of clicking on passive, you're clicking on another target to go attack. So you can see I sent my pet off to attack one ogre, and then I sent him off to attack another. Now you can see in this example, I'm gonna revive my pet, and now he's attacking the spider, and then he's going back and attacking the ogres, and I'm running by him. That's a two target pet pull. The next item you're going to be using is a large C4M charge. And you're actually going to use that immediately after you do one of these two target pet pulls. So see here, I'm targeting one of these ogres up here. My pet's running up to him. And now he's running to attack another ogre, activating the freeze trap. And then once that trap's activated, I run by, place the charge on the door, get over here and feign. This part's a little bit tricky because you're gonna need to use an item in addition to doing this pull. So that's why you're gonna need to get really comfortable with all of these mechanics so that you can do this run regularly and reliably. There's a pack of hyena that spawn right before the boss, and it's really important that you kill them because if you don't, they're going to interrupt the boss fight. So I'm gonna show you the fight twice. All right, it's really important you engage them there and then I kite them up this whole ledge and you're about to see why. Because essentially you just need to run the ledge once and that's probably gonna be enough time. Make sure that you're watching the hyena that's fastest and closest to you and you're concussing it so it stays out of the way. Honestly, you don't need to worry about using Serpent's thing. You're gonna be completely fine for this fight if you just use Concussive Shot and Multi-Shot. Multi-Shot is by far what does the most damage and your regular attack. So let's look at that one more time. Really, these Hyena are easy to stress about. I was nervous about them, but you wanna make sure you're just pulling them from the right spot. As long as you engage them here, it's gonna be really easy. You're gonna get the hang of it. Just engage them, get a multi-shot in. If you don't have a frost trap, don't worry, that's fine. Just run up this ledge, and this ledge is so powerful. Running all the way here, then means that you can shoot them all the way back, which is usually enough time to kill two or three of them, as you can see here. Look at how many shots I get in when they're not even able to attack me, right? I'm able to almost kill both of these hyenas just by them running back across that ledge. After multiple attempts, you'll get across. Now let's talk about the mechanics of the boss fight. You're gonna be using that exact same ledge for this. He spawns either as a fire mage, a shaman, or a priest. If he spawns as a fire mage, that's the easiest one because he can't heal the boss. Whereas if he spawns as a priest, it's the hardest because he can heal the boss and he can bubble him. But you're essentially gonna be using the same strategy throughout this. Now let's see how to start it. You're gonna bring a pet to this position and you're gonna do a passive pet pull on the boss. But you gotta make sure that you run with your pet because if you let him go too far up this ledge, he's gonna despawn. So you have to come halfway and wait here for him to actually aggro the boss. As soon as he gets close, we're gonna activate sprint. And as soon as we see an animation change, we're returning because we don't want him to take too much health. You see he's at half health here, that hurts. You wanna make sure that he's at like three quarters health or something like that. And that is how you start the boss fight. Quite simple. And from this point moving forward, this is all you're going to be doing. You're going to be Viper stinging Tro Rush as often as you can to try and get his mana down to zero. And as soon as the other boss gets close to you, you're going to feign. Now, there are going to be times when your feign death gets resisted, and I'm going to talk to you about exactly what you need to do when that happens. Make sure that you don't let Cho Rush get too close to your pet because he will eventually kill it. And if your pet dies, you cannot continue this fight unless the boss is almost dead anyway. So now let's talk about what it takes to survive the resist. You see how I just got resisted? Fell off the ledge, popped Cheetah, and then ran up here. 
you can use this ledge to buy yourself loads of time. Just keep in mind, he's going to charge you just like that, and Cho Rush is going after your pet most of the time you've been resisted. So you need to get a shot at Cho Rush in so that he will start coming to attack you and he won't kill your pet. You can see that I let him do loads of damage to my pet there. And that was a big mistake. You don't want him to get that much damage off. And then my pet died. In this case, I would have had to restart the run. But I want you to see that it will get resisted sometimes, okay? So now we're going to do this entire run. You understand all the mechanics so you can see exactly what a full run looks like with no interruptions. You don't actually have to use a freeze trap at this point. There's actually like four or five different ways you can do the beginning. And you also don't need to do the wall jump. I prefer doing the wall jump because it puts you in an inaccessible spot. So it's really easy to get out of combat and you don't necessarily need to use feign death. You can just wait. Now we're gonna do our first passive pet pull. Sometimes you get polymorphed here. So that's why I scattered that Gorduck Mage Lord. Sometimes you can also get through here without feigning. In that case, I aggro the puppy. But if you feign, don't worry too much about it. There's a bunch of mobs that patrol here, and you just got to make it work, right? So now I use this ledge to drop combat, and that's something that's really useful. Also, if you pay attention, you can see that my feign was still up, and I was in combat. But instead of just standing there, I revived my pet and healed it a bit. That's a really good habit, because if your pet's alive, you can summon him and buy yourself more time if you need to. You're really going to want to focus on that reliability. It's going to give you some, some great things when you die, and then you don't end up having to repeat the entire run. Now, that was another passive pet pull. In that case, the Warlock targeted me, so I scattershotted him so he couldn't finish his attack, and then I killed the Eye of Kilrog. Usually you can kill the Eye of Kilrogs fast enough that you don't need to worry about them. Now I'm about to perform the first two target pet pull. So that's when we send him off at this ogre, and then we send him off at that other ogre as soon as he's aggro the first one, and that allows us to run by. Next we're going to take care of these insects. It's important to pay attention here because if you get out of feign death before that demon pet returns, He's going to come right back at you, and you're going to have to repeat everything. So make sure that that doesn't happen. For the insect pull, it's a two-target pull, but make sure you look at the insects and don't move until all of them start attacking your pet. At this point, for some reason, Cho Rush, he always seems to be right there, and he performs a charge right there. So let him attack you once and then feign death. He didn't actually charge me there, but sometimes he'll charge you and you'll get knocked out of your feigned death and then you're screwed unless you can summon your pet and get enough time to kill him, right? So the, once the eye comes in, it doesn't matter how close he is to other enemies, you can just kill him no matter where he is. The next part, we're going to use a freeze trap and a scatter. I'm just waiting for Cho Rush to be in the right spot so that he doesn't screw me. Something went wrong there. You can see that the wrong guy got frozen and I got attacked but I was still able to make it by and make it into the spot and get the feign in. So now I'm using an invisibility potion. It's really important at that part that you have Cheetah active when you use the invisibility potion, because that means that you can pass all of these enemies and get substantially further. This is also a specific moment where having improved Cheetah really helps, okay? Now we're going to place a frost trap and then I'm going to do another two target pull and then use a large Cephorium charge to break open this locked door. <coughs> I got crippled here, but don't worry. Usually the cripple will wear off soon enough that it doesn't matter. This is normally the part that I freak out the most in. But as long as you can get out of LOS here and feign, it's usually not going to be resisted. But make sure that you wait for the demons, because if you get out of feign immediately, especially when you use the frost trap, then you could get up and then your the demons come and attack you, and then your feign death is on cooldown and you got a big problem. Now I'm going to perform a passive pet pull. This one's really simple. Um, I decided to just do it from the whole way there. You can use frost traps. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it. Really, you just got to get by in whatever way works for you. Some people also do all of these pulls at the same time. So if you have a tankier pet or you have more stamina, you can do two pulls at once instead of one. However, I wanted to do a guide that effectively shows you guys how to do each step, even if your pet's pretty weak. 
All right, so now we're gonna pull the boss just using another two target pull. I'm gonna attack the boss with my pet, use dash, and then attack that guy, and then run past. Now, right here, sometimes there's hyena. So you have to wait to make sure they're not right there. But in this case, if you time it right, they're usually gonna be out of the way. Now we're gonna do another passive pet pull here. And then that's going to be the last pull of the entire run. And the rest of it is going to be the boss fight. Now we're gonna kill the hyena. We actually got in a really good position here because the hyena were already in this part when we got here, so I didn't need to wait for them. But usually you wanna wait for the hyena to be in the right position, and this is where track beasts comes really useful. I always have track beasts enabled at this point just so I can see where the hyena are exactly. And I place a frost trap here, but it's not hugely important. It's tricky to place traps here because all of the spirits see you and place you in combat even though they don't attack you, and this prevents you from placing a trap. So don't worry too much if you're not able to get a trap off. It's not worth waiting a whole other rotation for them to come around. And I was right at the edge there. You don't want to wait any longer than that because if you attack them when they're too close to all those other dogs, they pull every single one of them, and you basically have to wait until they go through their whole patrol, patrol route before you can kill the boss because these guys will almost always come back while you're still fighting the boss and cause you tons of complications the hyenas are pretty to kill pretty they're pretty easy to kill to be honest they were the thing that i stressed out the most about but now i've gotten the hang of it i kill them first time every single time whereas in the beginning i would try and do different things i try and kite them in different places it just really didn't work out that well so now i just make sure to use this big ledge and then also to make sure that i can summon my pet and have him tank if necessary because that's going to help me get more time to get a feign or to kill them now that we've killed the hyenas we can get started on the boss fight so you need to understand that because these spirits can see you and place you in combat, you have to go into this wall and feign in order to be able to use your mana potions and to feed your pet. Or sorry, in order to heal your mana by drinking and to feed your pet, okay? So I usually come right here, I get enough mana to revive my pet. I do that, I feed it, and then I mana up until my pet's at full health, I'm at full health, and I'm at full mana. That's the point where I'm ready to start the fight. You can see in the general chat that somebody else, another hunter, is doing this and just got the rod of the Ogre Magi. So they're trying to sell it to somebody. That's something that you can do. I personally don't do that very often. I usually just disenchant or vendor all of the loot because I don't want to deal with bringing somebody in and back. But sometimes people will pay up to 40 or 50 gold for an item. So it might be worth your time. And definitely, if you get that epic item, the Trent's, Trent's two-handed weapon, that is uh, definitely worth doing. Warriors will be sure to give you a couple hundred gold for that. So now we started the fight, and I got really lucky on this roll because this was the fire version of Cho Rush. He can be a fire mage, a shaman, or a priest. The fire mage is by far the easiest. Even though his spell does the most damage, it takes the longest to cast, which means you can almost always get behind this pillar and be safe. This was a pretty clean boss fight. Um, I didn't have too many resists. I think he resists me just once. Now, usually the boss fight is going to take up about one half of your time. So you're going to get here after around 10 minutes, and then you're going to do the boss fight, and you'll be done around 20 minutes later, unless you've really gotten good at it, and you've really gotten the hang of it. And now that I've explained so much about the mechanics, I want to be real with you guys, because... This is one of the most challenging things that you can do as an individual hunter in this game. Almost everything else in the game is based on group activity and group efforts. This is the epitome of you being an individual, you doing solo stuff as a hunter. You can get a bunch of really good gear here, and you can even get one item that almost gives you your epic mount. It's also a really, really challenging and so customizable. There are so many different ways for you to do all of the things that you can do here. I'm not showing you the best way. I'm just showing you one way. It's really fulfilling. 
That being said, it is quite challenging. A lot of these guides will have you think, oh, you're going to be doing this in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or 20 or 30 minutes, yada, yada, yada. Yes, it is true that a successful attempt at this takes around 20 minutes or 30 minutes, but I had to practice this and fail about 50 or 60 times to get to this point. And that's something that really inspired me to make this video for you guys. I wanted you guys to have a resource that really tries to teach you how to do this run properly and teaches you how to anticipate all the things that you're going to do, such as a resist right there, right? You should expect that. You should know how to handle yourself so that you can keep your pet alive and the enemy won't kill you and you can get another faint. You can see there that he resisted my feign, charged me once, and then actually got aggro back on my pet. It's super weird, guys. Sometimes they resist, and both of them resist you. Other times they resist, and only the spirits behind them resisted you. Other times they resist, attack you once, and then go off and attack your pet. It's super weird. You're going to get used to it. You're going to get comfortable, and you're going to be able to anticipate almost every single possibility here so that you always have another option, right? And trust me, every time you kill this guy and you get some loot, you're gonna feel good. And that's if you don't get that epic item. Man, if you get that epic item and you get your epic mount, boom, it can be such good money. That is awesome, right? So now the boss fight is almost over. I'm actually going to be a little bit risky, as you'll see in a second. I put on Cheetah, and then I just keep fighting him. I don't even care about my pet anymore, because I know that he has so little health that I'm going to be able to kill him, and my pet's going to despawn. So as soon as he kills, as you kill him, you can loot him. You're going to get tons of these items, guys, like tons of Barbarous Blades and Leggings of Destruction. Now, before you spawn the Tribute Chest, it's really important that you run over here, because as soon as you kill the boss, most of the enemies in the instance don't care about you anymore. And you can talk to this guy. So talk to him and have him run away, because this just gets you another blue. This means that now when I go into the tribute chest and I open it, there's going to be one additional magic item in the chest. And I got pretty lucky in this run. I got some great items. Granted, I, I don't need any anymore, but in this part, I was actually just trying to get a good, solid, high-resolution image of the tribute chest so that I could use it earlier on in this guide, so I apologize. And now, don't wait, the video's almost over, but I got a secret for you I'm going to share at the very end. Something that could be useful in your real life. Transcend the world of video games. Live a life where you're earning money online. Can you imagine a situation where you're playing World of Warcraft, you alt-tab, you do some stuff for 30 minutes and earn your work for the day, alt-tab, and you keep playing WoW? That's a life that is possible, and that is my life. I can do anything I want, any time of day, and I'm about to tell you exactly how. Always make sure to disenchant the greens and vendor the blues. What's up everybody? Thanks for watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I apologize, I don't have any other World of Warcraft content available. But if you do like my teaching style, I have tons of videos teaching people how to earn money online and how to become a self-employed person. You can live an amazing life at a young age where you're essentially retired and you get to spend every day doing whatever it is you want. If you're interested in this kind of thing, check out this video where I talk about how it is that I earned $2,000 my first 90 days teaching on Udemy. And if you're interested, check out this video where you can learn how to set up time with me so we can talk one-on-one -on -one and I can help you get solutions for your problems or be a calming, regular, reassuring voice in your life. Thanks for watching and as always, see you next time. Ciao!